Hey, what's up? Lee Ron here. Thank you for joining me in today's episode of Painting Masters. Today we'll look at Bridget Austin, a Wisconsin-based artist from the US. Um, and the reason I wanted to uh, show her works is because they have a lot of the things that I'm looking forward to, forward to really working on this year and injecting into my own work, and that is that preservation of glow, of color, and lots of beautiful saturated colors, but still not going too overboard, keeping things very light, very transparent, um, and very glowy in a way. So without further ado, let's look at her works. Okay, so we'll get started with uh, one of the paintings that really showcases one of the things I want to add more of to my work, which is uh, these beautiful colors and, and beautiful saturation, keeping things very light, even when it seems like things are strong and punchy. Uh, it takes a lot of subtle value control in addition to the colors to get things right like that. Uh, now, one more thing I will put an emphasis on throughout this entire video is um, avoiding overwork because that's one thing that so many people have asked me about and still ask me every every almost every few days on email messages and so on. Uh, and I think her work is a really good showcase of how to avoid that. So we're going to explore that idea a little more. Um, in the next couple of paintings as well. So this one's called Garden Kaleidoscope. Because I have the names of all of them, why not share it? Uh, for this one, I don't have a name. So for most of them, I do have a name. Now, this is another one of my favorites. And if you ask me compositionally speaking, uh, this is probably one of the best paintings here uh, because there is so much going on. It's a rather um, interesting composition that goes portrait rather than landscape, shows that bridge and all of the lily pads and all the flowers under it. Very, um, what artist was it that did the, Cezanne, I think, that did this bridge scene. I'm not sure though, sorry um, if I got it wrong. Uh, so, so many things going on, the people on the bridge, the foliage in the background and combining all of these elements into one piece that really sings. Uh, is one of the big challenges, even when you have a good grasp of techniques and uh, controlling the washes and wet and wet and so on, understanding how to combine that into something that works uh, is a pretty major achievement. And that's the, to me, that's the staple of a really uh, skilled uh, and experienced artist. It's something like for me, even though I get things to look really good, when it comes to more complex and larger compositions, I very often think to myself, okay, I got some parts to look really nice, but the whole thing together, together does it work fully? Not always. It still looks good, don't get me wrong, but uh, it doesn't necessarily sync together. Okay, it's uh, n another level above. Now, I had to include this one, uh, DC south of Sturgeon Bay, um, <clears throat> because it has such a beautiful mood and atmosphere and the type that I really like. Um, the type of view, the kind of a rural scene uh, with the farms and the barns in the background and, and all of these um, suburban houses or rural houses. Uh, and it's a beautiful time of day because you see all of these long stretching shadows that indicate that it's probably, my guess would be sunset. Um, with that stronger red, it could be su um, sunrise as well. But uh, to me, it looks more like sunset. But, you know, everyone will interpret it the way they want to. But look at the beauty in those reds to the right. All of these trees right here. Um, takes a lot of skill to know what value will still preserve that atmosphere and that mood of the time of day uh, while still keeping it uh, looking fresh and, and saturated and, and and balanced everything together. I love this. And the composition is genius as well. Uh, lots of interesting focal points to look at. And even though she doesn't necessarily go in, goes into um, the smaller, tiny details, you can still kind of get a good impression of the scene and you have a lot to look at. There's still a lot to look at and you can sp I can spend a long time just looking at this painting. Um, just lovely and nothing is in excess too you know the colors you have so many colors but it's still a quite reserved scheme uh, that she's probably using to produce all of these beautiful colors um, and and even if it's not like three primary colors and there's more it still works together well so yeah really one of my favorites here uh, here's a good one to show you when it comes to avoiding overwork um, very good planning of where the leaves are uh, where the highlights are going to be, and with every layer, it's just a very clever 
planning process. Um, so if you look at especially these, like the edges here, the layers underneath, uh, and that's a very common technique of doing um, negative painting uh, and, and doing it starting from the uh, lightest and then going for the darkest. So you start with leaving this lighter area and then within the shadow around it, you paint with yet darker paint to leave out some darker, um, darker uh, negative shapes. Uh, same goes for these ones, but the planning here is excellent. So uh, I'm sure she knew exactly where everything goes because you can't achieve this without knowing that. Um, and in addition to that, look at the washes in between the shapes and in between the details, they're fairly flat. No need to do a million brush marks to get every single leaf's texture. You can do some of it here and there, but for the most part, if you have your major shapes set up right, which is these flowers and these leaves, you don't need much details in the in the larger, more background areas. In fact, it will be counterproductive to have them. Uh, so that's another important thing, in my opinion, to have in mind. Here's another beautiful, beautiful, uh, similar example. This one is thimble, thimbleberry uh, blossom ridges. Uh, this one is uh, sunflower splash, and it is. It's just beautiful. Um, same technique, very similar. Uh, however, with this one, we have a few more lost and found edges on the sunflowers themselves, combining into the background. Um, this is a challenge, uh, setting up such a scene, having it work so well together, uh, the planning and then the execution as well, knowing where to paint which wash and, and where to stop. It's a big thing. Um, and I do think it, it showcases how important it is to plan these things out. And very often you may think that your work lacks due to lack of skill, but very often it will, uh, just said very often twice, but very often or many of these times it will actually be lack of planning and lack of, um, it's something you also train at how to plan properly. So it's just another thing I want you to have in mind. Uh, this is just beautiful. This, this combination of blue and yellow, keeping them separate, but still merged uh, is a very uh, impressive feat. Now I want to direct your attention to one last thing in terms of the color harmony here. Um, if you look at the flowers, the flowers that are more in the light have these small, beautiful blue shadows within them that contrast very strongly with the orange and, and the yellows. However, the flower that's in the shadow has a blue and then a, some touches of warmth to it, some touches of uh, purple, but warmer brown, something like that. So that's a nice contrast as well between the two areas. Um, and notice how this blue is very dominant in this leaf, but in other leaves that are more sunlit, it's green and yellow. So just very clever. I think this probably has like three colors in it, four colors max, and it works so well. So another thing to think about this one, just super impressive to me, super impressive with controlling all of the colors, the subtle shifts, keeping it singing, keeping it um, very vibrant, not saturated necessarily, but vibrant, because some of these colors aren't necessarily super duper saturated, but still, now if you look at the vase itself, look at this beautiful wet and wet technique for giving us the feeling that we see through uh, the, the vase and we see some of the uh, branches of these uh, flowers, just beautiful. Now, even if we zoom out and forget about the vase for a moment, look at the glasses here in the window at the back, look at how beautiful these are and how they help in enhancing the impression of the flowers. They make the scene a little more um, self self contained, I guess, uh, in a way, if you just keep the background white, then yes, these flowers kind of run away to the sides. But here, it actually creates a beautiful framing of the scene, which I personally really, really like, uh, not to mention all the beautiful colors within the glasses, all of these nuanced purples and turquoises and, and blues and yellows, just fantastic. This would be a good one for me to do a study based on. It's very complex, but I, I think I can uh, give it a try. Um, there is so much that goes into making such a piece, so much. Um, here's another one. I love this. What I love about this one is actually the simplicity. <clears throat> and it's a very misleading simplicity because once again, the planning um, and the preparation to paint such a, a scene takes a lot of effort and, and a lot of focus. Uh, but then the execution and to really execute it in a simple way also takes a lot of skills. For example, just look at this tree at the background, how smart she was by just making it a little more muted so that it <clears throat> still contrasts with the, the cabin or whatever that is with, of the lighthouse structure. 
it still contrasts because it is still quite cool in a way, but it's much more muted than these ones. And that's beautiful. And look at these rocks. It's so easy to go overboard and exaggerate the, the, the details within them. And she keeps it very simple. And it's not a small painting, by the way. If you Even if you just look at the size of the signature here at the bottom right corner, you can tell that this is probably, I don't know, like quarter sheet, maybe? It's not, it's not tiny, that's my point. Maybe half, I don't know if it's half a sheet, but something along these lines, maybe like an A3 size. <clears throat> which isn't very, which isn't too small, maybe even larger probably than A3, uh, but I don't know, that's just my guess, but it's just so smart, look at these rocks, and you can tell that these also are kind of ground and rocks, and she's not bound by the <clears throat> color, so she doesn't force herself to use, you know, this kind of a color here and that color there, the colors flow together, a bit of blue, a bit of purple, a bit of yellow, a bit of red, they all move to and, and mix together, but thanks to the values and the clever shape design, you can tell what is what. You can tell exactly where the water ends. You can tell what the reflections are. So much skill that goes into this kind of a piece, and it's very easy to misjudge that and think it's actually simpler than it is. Very often that would happen to me as a beginner and to this day. I'll try doing a study, and I'll find it's much harder than I expected. By the way, this is uh, double the pleasure. Uh, this one, um, Roadside Hollyhocks, F-Rhyme. Prime. <laughs> that's actually a biblical name. Um, I love it. Thanks to the a couple of things, I will say. So look at how she uses reds and blues to design this uh, little shed or cabin. Uh, the, the red actually provides outlines and the line work, quote unquote, to this thing. Um, and you can really feel the warmth of light on it. And then this genius blue shadow just comes over here. But let's look at the context of the entire scene. And what I love most about it is this very unique composition of putting these flowers uh, in the foreground, putting a lot of emphasis on them. To be honest, I didn't see almost any paintings that do that. Uh, I have seen one or, or two by Nita Engel, uh, but I have not seen many paintings that do that. I can probably count them on one hand. Um, because the fo foliage and flowers is something we'll often kind of delegate to the either foreground but very simplified or background uh, and here she courageously takes them on as the main part of the scene in a way uh, which makes me really really like this one now look at the background and how it enhances the shapes of these flowers by contrasting them both in value and in temperature so you get very warm and then very cool in the background um, and also in value, this is a little darker. If you compare these two values, this is a little darker than that. And also in the shape design, very clever. These large shapes that are cut by these smaller shapes. And even though the negative painting isn't perfect, you see here these small gaps, it still looks beautiful. To me, it looks really amazing. Such a beautiful, clever scene. Um, putting all of these uh, burnt siennas and, and ultramarines together, it just works so well. And this does take courage in my opinion. To me, it would take a lot of courage to put the florals right up front and then also have a background that is still interesting but doesn't compete with the, f the flowers too much. It's just so smart. Uh, here's another one I really, really like, Summer Wilds. Um, and again, that goes to the how to avoid overwork. Same for this one, by the way. Look at the background, very simplified. Same here, it's just a wash that she did wet and wet, lots of wet and wet, and painted around some shapes. And a lot of her technique is based on that. So you'll see her doing one light wash with some negative shapes to create these beautiful white highlights. And then inside that darker, slightly darker wash, doing another one while negatively painting. And also there are some lifts here. I do believe some of these were lifted, like these, this leaf. Some of these leaves were probably uh, lifted. And look at these beautiful transitions, blue and then green for the actual leaves and, and branches. Just so good, so good. And, and even though it's not necessarily the style I enjoy the most, um, even to look at very often, like the color combination here isn't my favorite necessarily, or, or not just the combination, but the way she uses it. But I can so appreciate the technique behind it and the composition and the values. And, and so pretty much just the colors aren't my cup of tea necessarily for this one. But it's just so smart. 
That's what I think. And I can really enjoy the complex negative painting technique here. I love negative painting, not only as a technique to do myself, but also to look at paintings that were done that way. It's just beautiful. Uh, here's another one, a little bit different, and I did want to share with you something like this, uh, White Village, uh, Comares, Spain, uh, because it does have some uh, ink in it, pen and ink. Uh, I wanted to show you something a little different, and from afar, you can barely even tell. You know, I saw this one small on Google Images, and I could barely tell. So for anyone who uh, enjoys that kind of a thing, and I know I should start doing more of these, uh, look at the sky, look at the control here. Uh, of the slightly warm-ish clouds and the, the blue here and how they maintain their uh, independence. You see this really two clear separate shapes, but still tons of lost and found edges, obviously. So just so, so smart. I believe we have like two or three more uh, to go. Um, yeah, two more after this one. So another really clever one, again, putting the florals up front, not being scared of them, and then putting uh, something around that. Uh, and really making them the focal point in a way, or the either the f main focal point or the secondary, it doesn't matter. Uh, just such a beautiful work. And even these trees here, even here, you don't have overwork, okay? these This is one shape of tons of leaves. This is another shape of tons of leaves. This is another, if you start filling in this area, for example, with tons of tiny, tiny leaves, it will lose that freshness and that impression. Look at this tree here. Same goes, one big shape, a couple of shadows. One big shape, a couple of shadows. One big shape, a couple of shadows. Same goes for these, uh, this foliage here. One big shape. Now, and, and again, <laughs> you want to preserve clear shapes and not go overboard with millions of Indescrib ind indiscriminable, <laughs> that's not a word, but tons of leaves that you can tell apart. And the magic comes from the edges of the shape. So if you set up clever edges like here, you see all of these small jagged edges, you're good. You don't need tons of leaves. You just need that jagged edged shape. Um, so yeah, here's one of my favorites too, time for, uh, for ice cream. Just thanks to this, again, clever composition and subject selection, honestly showing these flowers, showing this ice cream shop uh, in the background and doing all of these beautiful color combinations of reds and blues and how they contrast together. And that, that awning is just genius. Um, if you look at the overall composition, it's just so smart to put the reds and then blues and then again reds and greens in the, at the bottom, uh, all of these individual leaves. A lot of negative painting, once again, her work has a lot of that if you're a fan of it. Uh, had a really good time looking at this painting. Um, here's another one. So yeah, we have three more. I was wrong. Uh, just lovely. Look at this negative shape here. Really building it up smartly, uh, cleverly. That's Those aren't words, right? Uh, but in any case, and look at this bottom section here. Even within the shadowy shape, she still maintains a lot of beautiful saturation and temperature contrast. So a bit of blue, a bit of brown. Uh, same goes for uh, this section right here, up top, purple, orange, um, slightly bluish purple and orange. Um, it's it's present everywhere. She even indicated the texture of the brick wall, which is so cool. Uh, and obviously, the saturation here and the vibrancy in the middle is the strongest to really establish that as the focal point. Uh, and the last one, okay, so this is also one of my favorites. Uh, this is more of my cup of tea and my... Um, where I'm more experienced in getting those contrasts and, and the values. Um, but I really wanted to show you her work because all the previous works are what I need, honestly, to put more into my work. Um, and look at these lovely shadows of orange and yellow and purple and everything is, again, the shapes are simplified and that's the, the important part because you don't want to bombard the viewer with a mess unless that's what you're going for. Um, if this is your message, you want to keep things fairly clean, but look at the sh smart shape design. So the shapes are connected. This shadow is connected with this shadow. It's kind of connected with this shadow and this shadow and this. And even if you mess up the flow sometimes, like here it's not perfectly flowy, the green and the orange, that's fine. You can't expect yourself to be able to fill in one big shape in one go. It's very hard. Uh, so you can stop and then continue and then stop and then continue if you have to break off the wash. But just the fact that you design the shapes like that uh, is enough to ensure that the message will come across. Um, and co talking about composition, very, very good. Um, this I love this stem that goes really curved. It's so smart uh, to place, even just placing these elements like that. Uh, is so clever and I love it. And notice how when you put 
shadows that are close to a light source so you get this very light light and then it's very dark uh, dark strong contrast uh, you can use very pure and strong paint like these oranges here and the stronger yellows stronger greens and blues to have a feeling like the light almost seeps into the shadows so it's not a dead and muted shadow it's a very saturated and vibrant shadow and that's what i want to direct your attention to um, and I think with that we're done. Uh, this one's called Harvest Highlights. Uh, so yeah, I, I think I mentioned that. Uh, I really hope you enjoyed this one. Now let's wrap it up face to face. So this is for this one. And once again, I hope you enjoyed it. Um, I do think perhaps for me personally, doing a couple of studies of her works could be very beneficial and I may do uh, something like that. Um, really thinking about how I can incorporate more of these elements that I love into my own work. So with that, I wanna thank you once again. I really appreciate you being here. Be sure to, if you still aren't subscribed, to subscribe to the channel, leave a like, leave a comment, let me know your thoughts. And if there are any artists you want me to feature in the future, all of the artists I feature are pretty much 100% your requests. So thank you so much and I will see you again in the next vid. Oh,